Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Boulder Canyon here in Farming Simulator 19. We are doing the very final run on our planting of grass. This is it. The big question is, will the seed hold out until we get to the end of this little row? And it will. Just. Literally just. We had, just, well, 5% on the tank, but still... 40 litres of seed left over when you finish the field. That's pretty good going, that is, by anybody's standards. It doesn't matter who you are and where you're farming. 40 litres of seed left over when you've finished is pretty impressive. It's got to be said. That is pretty impressive. There was a little tiny spot that was left right there that is now being dealt with. That is all done. The only thing we've got left to do is the last little bit of fertilizer spreading, but I have finished the planting, so I need to press that one, and we need to go back to five times speed. So we've now got grass all over that field and all over this strip down the side here and all over the new field as well. So what we're going to be waiting for next is the grass to grow. We will be cutting down a few trees, and I did suggest that we might be doing some of that a little bit later today. And we probably will. I'm going to bring this one over to here, and I'm just going to stop it there. Turn the lights off. And then we will go back up to this one. And here I'm going to go hired help again. Only this time I'm going to use it to stop the second because the fertilizer isn't quite reaching the end there. That was a little bit too enthusiastic turning. Like that. There we go. Right, let's try that one. That's much better. Right, so we will just very quickly finish this little bit of fertilizer spreading that we need to do down this side. And if we go and have a look in the map, we can now see, yes, it needs lime, and yes, you know, that bit needs plowing. But those don't matter. They don't matter when it comes to grass. So we need to wait for the grass to just grow a little bit. Right, I, d I don't really know what you think you're trying to play at um but that's that's a, a, a big stone there you don't drive through it you need to drive around it i really i, I i'm at my wits end with the hired help some days and they, it, it's like they're just not even trying it really is some days i swear they're just not even trying that they're, they're just they're just looking at me and just laughing the whole time and not paying any attention to anything that they do. They're just blundering through life without a care in the world at all. You haven't completed anything and you know it. You haven't done anything at all and you know it. I'll just bring that down to there like that. Right. I'm just going to back up. We've got a little tiny bit to do on that corner right up against that rock. And then this bit is done as well. We're going to have to come back in the morning and do another round of fertilizer. And I will do fertilizer with this big tractor because it's able to handle the hill a lot better than any of the others. So we'll do that. And if we just have a look here, we've got fertilizer finished just on these few stripes. Those stripes are actually where the grass used to be. And driving down the hill without applying brakes is probably not the best, smartest move that we want to pull off. So we'll come along here like this and drive down here we'll reload the fertilizer a minute because we've got a little bit of time to do that just before darkness uh, before bedtime so if we get that one reloaded we may also be able to um service the seed drill and right you're good to go if we jump over this side i I don't know if the seed drill is actually close enough to the sh workshop to be able to do that, but I'm hoping it is. And Cody, nope, it's not. All right, never mind. Uh, jump into there. Back up over here. We get this seed drill serviced, and then we can hose it off as well. We should have just enough time to do that. So we just quick service on that one. There we go. Seventy-seven dollars. Repair that one. The tractor is not close. Enough. I'm not going to worry about the tractor. We get it up over here and hose the thing down. And then that's it. We're done for the evening. In the morning, we will put the front loader back onto this tractor. And we will deal with that one. So we, we'll stop you. We'll park you up there. We'll hose you off now. And then you can drip dry overnight. 
and then we'll be able to put the put the stuff away in the morning and we get the front loader on the tractor sort out those sheep over there just um clean up the food that's sort of lying around we may be putting another bale in for them i'm not entirely sure and top up their water and everything as well so there's the tractor cleaned off I'm over to this one okay that is brindingly brinding brindingly blight that is is brindingly blight it may also be blindingly bright, but, um, yeah, I, I, th I think we'll just go like this. I, I think we'll do it like this. Slightly darker than maybe ideal, but it it's better than the, the, the brinding blightness. We don't want the brinding blight. Run over here. That trailer, I'm refusing to clean the trailer until I've actually used it again. So when we, actually, when we start doing a bit of harvest work or something like that, then we will use the trailer. But we're not going to do it before then. So let's have 11 hours of sleep. We'll feel much better after this. Um, so yeah, I we're getting closer to me prioritizing a, a new hut because, quite frankly, living in the tent is you know we're, we're going to need to move on from that. But we're also going to want some machinery sheds as well, and those are going to go over here as well. We're going to put. Like I was thinking my house would go over here somewhere, um, my temporary house. And then we'll put a machinery shed in here somewhere as well. And that will sort of go take care of this bit of steep bank and just eat out, sort of um, nudge out the, the hillside just here, which I think will be perfect. We'll dig that out. And I'll probably use the landscaping tool to do that. And that is actually completely 100% realistic. I've done that myself a few times. Um, when you build a new shed, you sort of dig away the bank and uh, build your new shed sort of right in there and then you've got this steep bank all the way around it it's done all over the place so then the access into the field will be over this side there won't be access into the field from this side anymore um or else up through there somewhere but uh we won't worry about that right now let's go and put this one away over here sheds and stuff we'll have to wait until we've got a little bit more cash oh i tell you what let's just check our growth a minute and see if we actually have any we do we've had a growth stage that means that we need to get some fertilizer onto that strip down there and some more fertilizer up here you can see we've got some lines up through here going through some of that um, that's where we sort of did some more editing work but we haven't plowed up and eventually that editing work will sort of all be disappeared we will be gotten rid of we won't need to worry about that Go and check our sheep. We've got eight and a half thousand liters in that one. Fourteen hundred, seven and a half, seven thousand. We're doing pretty good with that. And let's have a look at you boys in here, girls, I should say. You sixty-one percent. We got plenty of water, so really all I need to do is just scoop up the grass that is in front of the pen, and then that one will be fine as well. I'll pick that up. Oops, steady. I don't want to drive into my, um, what do you call it there? A wrapper. I, I, don't, I don't want to be driving into that one and damaging it. Let's bring this one over here. I'm not going to load this one up with seed now. I'm going to leave this one empty of seed. And we're going to put it in behind here. Because this one is one that we don't use very often. So it doesn't matter if it's further back. So I'm going to drop that one back in there. Lower it down like that. And I've asked you in the last couple of episodes where you would like me to put the new sheep pen when we get to it. Now, I no longer have 40 grand available, so I can't even show you with the large chicken pen. I'll have to show you with the small chicken pen. Uh, we're going to be getting a large sheep pen. And I want to know, do you think I should be putting the large sheep pen here, just the opposite side of this little track that we've built, so they're quite close together? Or do you think I should bring the sheep pen down over here, the other side of the rock and the pond here, and put it so that it's up against the road down here, somewhere in this bit right here? Where do you think I should put the sheep pen? I mean, if I do put it here, it'll be back from the road slightly so that when it's placed, it doesn't actually um, interrupt the road surface. And we will have to do a little bit of leveling work around it. I'm hoping that we won't have to do too much, but there will have to be a little bit. Uh, but where do you think it should be placed? Get in the comment section and give me all of your thoughts and dreams on that one. And we will see what we can do. Next up, I want to come around this way and get that front loader on there. We've got no full pallets of wool. 
Even though we've got several that are almost full. We've got three that are almost full. So technically I could go and sell those. Um, I'm going to wait until they are actually full though. I mean, you look at the price at the moment of wool itself. What are we at? What are we getting? Uh, 800. So it's not a very good price anyway. That's on 229. I'm hoping that that's a low point. So by the time we get round to actually doing some grass harvesting, which would probably be in the morning, um, that should then have moved up a little bit higher and be the sort of level that we want for selling uh, grass. Uh, selling silage, rather, not selling grass. Right, let's back you up around here. Swing you around this way. And go and clean out the grass beside the sheep. Once we've got that little bit... I'm, I'm not going to put in another bale just yet. I will leave that for a minute. Bring that over to there. And right. Bring it round sideways. Sideways on is good. And then we can slowly bring that one in like that. Look at that. All loaded up. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. Bring you in here. Right. That's that one done. I don't actually need this tractor for a minute. So we're going to just park it up with the front loader on and leave it as it is. Bring that one around here. It's a good job there's nobody running around here. Because otherwise those spikes would do them a mischief. Shouldn't really drive fast with the spikes near the ground. It's not safe. Put that one. Well, if you're going to, you, you do it with the spikes right down near the ground. So if you're going to take somebody out, all you do is, um, you know, completely and utterly obliterate their legs rather than any other part of them. Still still not ideal, admittedly. It's, it's, it's not an ideal situation to go and take out somebody's legs and, and make it so they can never, ever walk again. Um, but it, it's probably better than, you know, running around with the spikes at chest height because... It's a little bit more difficult to continue on with life without the heart beating in your chest. Now, let's go up this side, and we've got a strip of grass down through here, and it's, it's sort of a question of how much grass have we got and how much do we need. I'm going to bring this one over here, so I'm hoping that it will travel down across the field, taking out as much of that fertilizer as it can. Or putting applying it is it's applying as much as we possibly can but it's putting a fair old stripe all the way across there we're gonna go here a second and oops there there's one bit there that it may not get across it may decide to stop yeah stopping right there slowing down so i'm just going to keep it moving forward here until it gets past that bit it's quite a long bit actually then i press h again and it should now get all... No, it's not even going to do that. It's not even going to do that. Keep it running a bit more. Let me try that. There we go. Right, now it should get down to the end here and it should turn. And then it should go back up the other end and it should finish applying all of the fertilizer to the field. Yes. It is going to. It's going to go all the way back up through. That's a nice even coat of fertilizer right the way across. The decision that we've got to make now is do we harvest now soon? And if we look back through this way, that one's we've still got to wait a little bit before that is fully ready to harvest. This one here looks like it's on the third growth stage, maybe? Might be the second one. It might not quite be dark enough green there. It has moved along, but really, i got to decide, do I harvest this one and then leave that one until it's caught up with, you know, leave this one until this one catches back up, or just leave all of it until all of it is ready at the dark orange stage. I mean, I suppose what I could do is wait until this one is the light orange stage, that one will be dark orange, and then harvest the whole lot together. So I will take a bit of a yield hit, but I'm not going to be leaving it for a sort of prolonged period of time waiting for the grass to all come ready to harvest I'll be able to harvest the whole lot it's just that some of it won't be yielding quite as well as some of the rest of it thinking probably the latter option would be better if we leave this bit here 
just for a while until... Well, we'll leave all of it until this bit here is ready to harvest. The same stage that, that bit over there is right now. So it's not full yield, but it is at least harvestable and we will get something from it. Now, I'm going to set that one going up there. Didn't bother reloading it, which I probably should have done. And while that one starts off doing this... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm going to ride this one up to here, and then I'm going to go over to the other side of the stone with it and just set it going on that bit, and then I will leave it going. So I'm going to go like this here, and put that going again like that. And then I'm going to bring it in tight on that side, like that, and go up to there. She's going to take it over a little bit further so it goes sort of like that. And I'm going to hope that that is roughly in the right spot for it. Roughly. It's probably not going to be great. It's not going to be ideal. But it should be roughly in the right spot. We've got a good stone there right in our way. As long as you can... Good, good, good. He, he, I thought for a minute he was going to try and drive forward and climb over the stone. He didn't. He was reasonably sensible about it. And he decided not to try and drive over the stone. Decided to keep his job and uh, keep going. I'm, I'm very impressed with this decision. The decision to keep your job and just keep soldiering on was definitely in your favour. So, trees. We want to be cutting down some trees. The, the grass is not ready for harvesting yet. So, we want to be thinking about cutting down some trees. And this bit over here, I'm not quite over far enough. I need to be over about a tractor's width. So if I start it from there, like that, there's over my tractor's width. I'll be a little bit too far over, but it'll be fine. That'll carry on now and do the rest of the field. Uh, yeah, we, we need to be thinking about trees. And what I'm going to do first is... I'm actually... What are you doing? Oh, it's just being crazy. Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to go to decoration here. And I go to Sandcastle here, right? And it doesn't matter about that, right? We're, we're not going to be placing down a Sandcastle. What we want to be doing is we want to be having a look at some of these bits around here. How this is all laid out. What we've got here. So right now, we've got a great big stone there. And we've got this hill that comes along this side. And then if we travel all the way back up this way, we've got a stone over there. And then back up this way, there's a big stone up at the top there, but there's nothing in between in here. And what I'm thinking is that our next round of tree felling should take care of these trees here behind this house. Remove those. And we work up the hill to the corner of that stone. It might be that we don't go from there. We sort of go from this bit that we've already cut. And we just go up to this part here. And we do a, a straight line up to there. And then we start working our way across this hill. Now we've got that big stone there. That one's in the way a little bit. But it doesn't have to be completely in the way. If we're going to be putting cows and stuff up here. Then what we could do is remove all the rest of the trees on this hill. We do a straight line. Roughly... In line with that one there. So we, we'll bring this round here. Look, there's, there's where that stone is over there. And we can remove some of these. And maybe we could leave a couple of these trees behind. Because this new field is going to come along here. So that bit there would be left behind. We could take the trees out. But uh, we we'll sort of come over to about here. And then it goes up the hill from there. And we go up this way. Right the way up through here. And we get to this point right here. Right about there. So we take out those trees there. And then every single tree back this way. We remove that whole lot. And that will make quite a big field. And what we'll end up doing is this bit here, sort of along this hilltop, that would be the edge of the field. This here ends up becoming... Uh, something different. This is where we're going to sort of put some sheds and put the cows and things like that. And the track will stay up at that height. And then the cattle pen will go in here, be dug down into the hills. There'll be a steep bank down around it that would never be used for anything. 
and then we'd have some straw and hay storage here as well and some of this space over here would also be used for say silage or something like that and then the boundary of the field would sort of come along here somewhere so this bit of it over here i mean it's still quite a, a, a distance from there up to the top of the hill comes along here and then it gets to about that rock and then it curves up and it follows that it goes up to the road and then it follows that road along and then over to here and then down again so it's not a square field not by any means but it doesn't have an inconvenient great big stone stuck right in the middle of it and then the next inconvenient great big stone is kind of the boundary for the next field where we're heading down this way now we've still got a lot of trees left on this bit but as it starts to narrow out down this way, we're then going to be looking at how... Because, I mean, we've got the trees all the way up to here. This is where we own the land to, right? all the way out that way. So it's a long way. We've got a lot of trees left. We can remove all the trees from that hillside. And we'll be able to do quite a lot of work up there. Now, you are not going to have quite enough fertilizer to finish this. So, while it's... Yeah, while it's just finishing that bit off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. I'm going to start this one up. And I'm going to drive it over here. And we're going to think about where we're going to start cutting these trees. I think we'll start cutting them down this lower end. And because then what I can do is I can use the, the, the way that we were doing it before. Uh, but we'll be stacking the timber down in our yard here to start with. So we can start sort of... Um, hacking our way through this timber up here. So let's just move this one over a minute to about here. We'll leave maybe a couple of trees behind that house there and then remove those trees there so we've got easy access down to our place. Um, let's get you. Right, yeah, I'll, I'll go and run over and get some more fertilizer a second. Um, yeah, well, we're also going to be wanting... I mean, we're going to need to build a road through here. And if I've got sheds and stuff going that way, over behind that stone, and I've got some sheds there, the track won't be able to come through there, which means that this track that we're going to build is going to need to go through here and then down this way and into our yard. This is going to be where our main track comes in off of the fields on that side, come in behind that side, and then come down. So there's a tree or two there that we'll leave behind the hired help hut, but then those taller trees will get rid of them. I don't think we want to be keeping those. And... Yeah, well, we will. We'll just clear the trees right there next to the truck to start with, and then we'll start working our way up the hill, I think. And once we've cut our strip right up across the hill, then we'll start working our way back. And when we feel like it every now and then, we will do another round of... Um, removing of trees it's going to take us a little while to get through all of those but now that we've got these two fields we have got two fields established we're, we're la they're, they're laid out ready to go um, we haven't got quite the same urgency about getting more fields done uh, yeah it's going to be good it's going to be great having the more fields done but that sense of urgency that we've previously had needing to get everything done is no longer there we no longer have that concern. We know that we've got the fields there ready. And we know that they're going to be able to be used. Is that left a stripe of fertilizer that hasn't been applied there? Seems a bit of an odd thing to go and do. Why is it left a stripe? How very peculiar. It has. I'm, I'm sure of it. No? No? No, actually, it hasn't. It hasn't left a stripe down there at all. I mean, I, I don't quite know why it's it's gone and done that. But, yeah, there's no stripe left. It's, it just looks like it on the map. Um, But, I mean, if we look at the map from here, that's roughly where we're going to be heading up. So we're going to be taking out the trees in this area here, which, to be honest, doesn't cover quite the same amount of area as this field down here. So it's, it's not going to take quite as long as you'd think to remove all of those trees that's not so bad and then we'll have this nice big field and the field it will sort of come along here this bit will no longer be active field we'll just leave that as planted grass uh, if we do move to having that as arable crops before we get cows going up there then 
Uh, we will replant it with grass before we start doing the work with the cows. And then that way, if there is any bits left, it's going to be planted grass. It's not going to be anything different. And we can start working our way around here. So all of that there is going to be buildings. And then this is going to be one big working field. And then we'll have, we've got sheep here. And we'll either have more sheep here or more sheep over that way, over there somewhere. And then... Chickens will be kind of the next thing. We've got cows will be up here. We've got sheep down there. And we get chickens down there as well. And then the final animal that we will be after will be pigs. And pigs are going to take a bit longer. We're going to need some more land, I think, so that we can get a wider variety of crops going. Because we need to keep the grass for the cows. And we've got to get a large pen of everything. I've got to get a minimum of one large pen of everything. And after we... Uh, yeah, it, that's that's what we said. For the completion of the series, a minimum of one large pen of everything and all the food must be full. The only exception to that that I stipulated at the beginning was that we might not necessarily have the pig pen with the root crops in it. That might be one bit that I don't do. The rest of it, yeah, we'll fill it all up. So we've got to have a variety of crops filling our pig pen at the end. And that's going to be the difficult bit. That's going to be the trickiest bit, is having the pig pen all completely full. The rest of it shouldn't be much of an issue. But getting the pig pen completely full, that is a little bit more of a problem. Because you've got to have wheat or barley. You've got to have canola, soybeans or sunflowers. And then you've got to have a huge amount of maize in there as well. So some of those are cash crops. Maize doesn't really like the, the only um real reason for maize is you either harvest it as grain for pigs or you turn it into silage for the cows or for selling uh but there isn't really any reason to have uh to grow maize for a cash crop it's it's still one of the least value crops there is right there, there is not very much money to be made off of harvesting that stuff at least that's what I found previously. I mean, it may have it may have changed slightly, but as far as I know, if I remember correctly, it's still one of the lowest value crops just to harvest as grain and sell. So it's not something that we want to get involved with. Okay, let's park you up there. I've I've done enough uh, messing around with those. We are going to start cutting some trees. I did say I was going to cut some trees today. I am a man of my word. I will do it. So that tree there is going to stay. That tree there is going to stay. And I think that tree there will stay. The rest will go. There's no point in going too crazy about keeping all the trees. We'll get rid of them. So let's make sure we are on 7 metres for length. Perfect. And let's come down here. Right. Let's see if I can remember how to use this. It's been a, been a week or two. Yes, I've remembered how to use it. Okay, that's good. And we bring that one out over here, like that. Easy does it. There. Right. Drop you down like that. And up. Okay. I'm already very pleased with this. I've remembered how to do it. And I'm just remembering now how easy it is to use the joystick setup that I've got with this. Um, with the... Is it easy? Is it easy set? Is it classed as easy settings? I don't know. There's a setting on it, and it's it is very easy to use. So let's bring that one back over there, and I get the next tree. This is where. Oh, I was gonna say this is where I end up not being able to do it at all. But no, oh, we did it. There. I have not yet found any of those crazy. You know the crazy trees that own like you can pick them up by. You, you've got almost the entire tree that you're sort of running around with. And there isn't very much of it left over at all. Now, which is those other three. So I've got four trees here that I want to take out. So I'll start with that one at the back. That one I do want to take out. Um, yeah, we haven't had any of those crazy trees yet with the tree harvester. Unless we have, and it sort of behaves differently with the tree harvester than it does when we cut them down with the chainsaw. So, therefore, I haven't actually noticed it. But it'll be interesting to find out if we do encounter um, well, 
I'm going to make the assumption that there's going to be some of them somewhere. Somewhere around here, there's going to be some more of those trees. So if we don't encounter any at all whilst cutting this next section, I'm going to then make the assumption that for some reason they don't... That, that the tree harvester doesn't affect them. They, they end up being cut properly by the tree harvester, which does seem a bit of an odd thing, but there we go. I, I'm... At the moment, I'm open to just about anything because I've seen some pretty crazy stuff with these trees now. And we're, we're not quite sure which, you know, how, how they quite work. And you, you get a tree that kind of exists and doesn't exist all at the same time. It's like Schrodinger's tree. They're, they really are. We're, 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 we're harvesting Schrodinger's trees here. He's, he's come along and he's planted a great big forest. For those of you who have no idea who Schrodinger is, um, there's this... Uh, Physicist, it, 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 is it a physicist thing? It's, it's basically, it's, it's uh, trying to get you to understand quantum mechanics. Okay, it's Schrodinger's cat. Some of you must have heard of Schrodinger's cat, even if you don't even know what it refers to. Um, basically, the guy said, and he, he didn't actually do it, but what he said was, you put a cat in a box, right? And then you seal the box up and you leave it for three weeks. Before you open that box... You don't know whether the cat has survived or whether the cat has died. You know, it had a little bit of water in there, something like that. So, it's it's touch and go. You, you sort of, you basically, you've put the animal in the box. And for a period of time that there is a chance that it could have died. The, the whole point of this is not about animal cruelty. I just, I just point that out. Um, the whole point is... We're Schrodinger's cat. Before you open the box, you don't know whether the cat is alive or dead. So, it, as far as quantum mechanics go, and as far as quantum physics go, um, before you open that box, that cat exists in both a live state and a dead state. So basically, the cat is both alive and dead at the same time until you open the box and then one of those realities is actually brought out and the other reality then disappears. But before you open it, both realities exist simultaneously. The cat is both alive and dead at the same time. That is Schrodinger's cat. And that was um, him trying to explain quantum mechanics. Um, so yeah, at the moment, the trees, all of these trees around here, they exist both as normal trees and as the special trees that um, sort of have no substance to them. So, we've got a forest of Schrodinger's trees until we've actually cut them all down, and then there will be one or the other. That's, that's, that's what it's basically all about. Anyway, I have run out of time, so if you've enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.